but that's as big as a redwood cone gets. And that's just another one of those kind of ironic things that are the tallest living thing on the planet has that little bitty cone. Here is a carving that was done uh, from a tree that was down, uh, down on our uh, river trail. And they do it with a chainsaw, which is just brilliant. So that's part of one of our trees. But couldn't cut any of these trees down, it wouldn't be, it would be terrible. And San Francisco, well, in the gold rush days, it was just a, a small village. The redwoods became the next thing to be mined. And as the population started growing and the demand for lumber increased, well, they nearly got them all. My dad, when he grew up here in the, in the 50s and the 60s, there was 22 mills between here and Laytonville. They were just taking sections and completely um, clearing it out. Now we're pretty much a uh, tourist industry. This is why the people come for the trees. Well, they're so grand, they're so majestic. These trees, I'm not talking about other trees, they repair themselves. If there's a fire with these redwoods, they come back. All the underbrush is gone. Sometimes a tree dies, but some of them have been burnt out and they're still alive. They actually don't have much success from their seeds. Our coastal redwoods mostly grow from, uh, from the root system of the parent tree. You know, I've been in the military. I was in the Navy Seabees. I've been all over the world, and there's, I couldn't wait to get back home. I feel sorry for the folks who live in Southern California because they don't have any trees, <laughs> nothing like this. I'm not spiritual, no. I just feel... Uh, better when I'm in the redwoods. And we joined the county choir and you asked if it was alright and you shouted